All right, so let's look what we've got today. Uh, let's look at a problem where we've got a cannon. We always love a cannon, right? And it's going to shoot out a shell. Um, and that shell is going to explode when it gets to the top of its trajectory. So it's going to come, going to have an initial muzzle velocity, muzzle velocity there, explosion here at the top at some height h. And what do we want to find? We want to figure out um, how far one of these fragments goes before it hits the ground, right? Some distance d. Um, when this other fragment just stops in midair because of the explosion, all right? So it's going to stop in midair and it's going to go down this way, but that's all going to be gravity. There's not going to be any velocity from the explosion. Okay, so let's sort of categorize these things. So we know things about a shell. So let's start with our shell. We know it has a mass, which has been sneakily set to 2m because the things um, explode and go into two equal fragments. That means each one of them has a mass of m. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. Uh, let's see, what else do we know? We know the initial velocity, or the initial speed, let's say. It's not the velocity. We know the initial speed, and that's v. And we know um, the maximum height. Max height, which we'll call h. And we know that for one of the fragments, I'll call it fragment A, its initial speed after it's created from an explosion is zero. We're going to find the distance uh, fragment B travels. Okay, something like that. D. Okay. So that's a good first half for our setup. So that's more or less just getting an idea about what's going on. Now, after we've got an idea about what's going on, I'm going to do a little bit of analysis, a little bit of qualitative analysis before we get into the mathematical analysis, right? Make sure that we understand what's going on. So we know that something's going to happen here, right? Um, so we've got something coming in. There's an explosion, and one thing's going to go downwards. One thing's going to come in a... Um, arc like that. It seems to me that this is a collision as far as we define collisions in physics. So I'm going to conserve some momentum. Okay, and conserving momentum is just, you know, summing all the momenta up before and then summing up all the momenta after and setting them equal to each other, right? So each object in the system, um, they, it can change its momentum, but each object in the system uh, or all the objects in the system, their sum stays the same. In this case, we even have a different number of objects before and after in the system. So that seems reasonable. Uh, what do I want to do for representation? I think I'm going to do a before and after picture for the momentum. All right. Now, before, I know that this thing has gotten to its apex, which means that it is going to have some momentum that's in the horizontal in the x direction. All right. And nothing in the y. And that's 2m. I'm going to call that x component of the velocity v1. And then afterwards, it has two different things. One thing is the shell that's going to fall has no momentum, right? So it has zero momentum, zero. And the other one is going to have a smaller mass. I'm going to draw it skinnier. Um, but it's also going to have a lot more speed because it has to take up all of this momentum from this guy. Um, and, but it only has half the mass, m, and some speed v2. So I think this is the way I'm going to look at this. So this sort of tells me what I need to know. This, for example, tells me that there's no momentum 
in any direction from this guy, so this guy has to have the same direction as this guy. And, and then we also figure out this relative size is just by our understanding about the conservation of momentum. This number has to be equal to this number, the mass part, which I've sort of made the thickness, um, has to change, has changed, so the width has to change because the area of this rectangle more or less has to stay the same. All right, so let's see what we can do with that. Let's make a plan. We're making plans. How do we start? We start with what we want to know, and what we want to know is the total distance that the fragment flies. So that total distance d, what we want to know there, is equal to the partial distances, one for the full shell and one for the exploded shell. Now I don't know either of those, so I'm going to have to figure out some way to find them. But that's all really just kinematics. So we know from kinematics how to find these particular objects if we know the speeds, right? If we know this v1 and we know this v2, we can find these um, distances. So we're already using this to figure stuff out. Um, so I'm going to call 2a d1 is equal to v1 times t. So we wanted the d1. We don't know the v1 and we don't know the t. And for 2b, I will call that d2 is equal to v2 times t. And those two t's are the same because we learned somewhere um, from some cat named Galileo that the time coming up for this guy is going to be the same as the time going down for anything as long as we're ignoring air resistance, and we will. So this time going down has to be exactly the same as the time going up because the height is the same. Doesn't matter about much of anything else. So we've got d2 is equal to two things that we don't know. So we've got three new things that we don't know, but we're in pretty good shape because we can figure out all of those um, pretty readily. For example, um, v1 here is a vector component of this vector, right? Because there's no air resistance, then the speed he here, the horizontal speed, doesn't change between here and here. That vector component, that x component, stays the same. So we can, from the initial velocity, which we know is v squared according to Pythagoras, and we know that thing because it's right here, we can figure out how much each one, one of those components is if we can find figure out the other one. So we'll go ahead and say we want this one, but we still need to figure out what v0 is. Now that's not really hard because we can go back to our kinematics. So one of the nice things about kinematics is that we already know what's going on here, right? We know that at the top here, the y, y speed is zero, the y component of the velocity is zero. And so, since it's v0 up here, that's what I just defined it as, right? That's what I want there. Um, that's being subtracted by the acceleration times the amount of time. Now, we still don't know that time. G we know, because it's a universal constant, and the V-naught we were looking for, so we're doing pretty good. And for B, we can find the time going down here. It's marginally easier than find the timing, finding the time going up, because this has no initial speed. So this is going to eventually hit the ground, so that's a height 0, but it's starting at a height h, it's coming down, right? And that position reduces by one half gt squared. Okay. So that's going to find us our t. And going up, um, we already have this one. So I guess we're okay. We've got the t. All we're left with, we've got everything except this little v2 here. How are we going to find that v2? Well, we could always conserve momentum, right? 
So we already know that the sum of the momenta on this side is equal to the sum of the momenta on that side. So this guy is equal to this guy. Um, I got those right here, right? I got this as um, 2mv1. So 2mv1 in the x direction is equal to mv2 plus 0, if you like. And in the y direction, it's 0 equals 0 plus 0. So we don't need any of those. But we do need this 2mv1 is equal to mv2. And that gives us all of the information we need based on this key to the problem, the conservation of momentum. Now that we have a good plan, now that we know everything we need to know, time is probably to execute on that plan. Let's see, we've got two parts here. I don't think I can do a really good job of separating them, but we can get going pretty quickly. If we start with um, one, for finding d equals d1 plus d2, right? Uh, and we can substitute d1s and d2s in pretty quickly. That's v1 plus v2 times t, because t is a common factor. So that's 2a and 2b, doing some substituting to get that in there. Uh, let's see, let's see. Now, why don't we get rid of that v2? because we don't know anything else to do with it. So let's do this. According to this, if we cancel those m's, v2 is equal to 2v1. So this is just equal to 3v1 times t. Okay, that's using 5, and that's a substitution. Let's see. Now I've got to figure out what to do with the v1 and the t. Well. I'm just going to substitute both of those things, right? So v1, if I look at Pythagoras, is the square root of v squared minus v naught squared. So I can substitute that in there. And t, I can get over here. And I have t is equal to v naught divided by g. So I have v naught over g. And now the only variable I have left hiding in there is going to be that v naught. So what have I used? I've used um, the Pythagorean theorem and this 4a. Okay, let's see what I can do because I've run out of water and my throat is dry. Let's see where I go with that v0. Um, I think I'm going to have to use both of these together. So I'm going to have to hide for just a second, move along, and just try to use these together to figure out what I want. So if I start with 4b, I have, um, if I multiply each side by g, gh is equal to 1 half gt squared, right? And, or g t squared, this guy. I don't want to use the eraser because of what happened last time. And it's not switching on me. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to live with it. It's not switching on me. Okay, anyways, that gt we get from up here, that's just equal to v naught. So we can substitute in with this 4a. Um, and say this is one half v naught squared, right? Uh, put put all that together. We have v naught squared is equal to two gh. And that can get substituted up in here. So we can substitute all that in there to say d is going to be equal to three divided by this g. So we can get rid of that and that. Uh, then I'm going to put a whole bunch of stuff under the radical. I've got v squared minus v naught squared, which is v squared, which I know, minus 2mg, or 2gh, excuse me, um, from this thing. And if I bring this under the radical, it's v, v naught squared that's multiplied by this entire thing. That's 2gh again. And that, I claim, is my answer. 
So let's see if it makes sense. First, symbols. Are we using the right symbols? I've got a G. G is a universal constant. That's all right. V. V is the initial speed. It's up here. We're all right. Already found G. We've got an H. H is up here. We're okay. And then we have a G and an H. So symbols, okay. <coughs> All right, so let's see what's left. We want to see if this makes sense symbolically or dimensionally. Uh, we want dimensions of length because we've got a distance. So you're supposed to just know that. If you don't know that, take better notes. Uh, let's see what we're going to do. So we can take in the denominator. We have a G, right? Three we don't have to worry about because it's unitless. This guy, there's a question. Is V squared, does, does that have the same units as 2GH? And the question is, and the answer is yes. So we get rid of that. We have... Um, the units of G times the units of H, right? Units G, units H, which is equal to LT to the minus 2 times L, which is LT to the minus 1 squared, which happens to be the units of that thing. So actually, I can have, I can just look at, for the answer, 2GH times 2GH, divide the square root of 2GH times 2GH, which is 2GH, and I don't need the 2, so I can just have that. Get rid of that, because I divide them against each other. I just have H, and that gives me L. And these things are together, so that makes sense as well. So we're doing pretty good. So we've got a pretty good idea about what this is going to do. Um, hopefully that made some sense, because, I mean, we're just looking at basically three parts of the problem, rising, explosion, Falling. Those are the three parts of the problem. Uh, this one, this first part we did with kinematics. This last one we did with kinematics. And this one we did with conservation of momentum. That's what allows us to connect them in a way that actually gets us the right answer. Um, this is the big physical principle for this guy. So I think that's probably reasonable. Um, so Take a look at this, make sure you understand it, and hopefully that'll help you out in your homework. Uh, your homework, you're going to have one of these guys go up like this and the other go at some other speed down here and stuff like that. Then you're going to find how far it goes. So it's going to be a little more fun. Um, but I think that's about it for now. So think about this, and I will see you next, next time. Next time.